Hey everybody, today I am bringing the second part of my jelly plate printing play. The first video, which I will link you to here on the top screen, was where I had used my jelly plate to have a little bit of fun with the Echo Park Aspen Winter stencil. And just to refresh your memory, this is what I did. I added some ink cubes and then brayered it to a nice layer, added my stencil, pulled my first print, then took the stencil off and pulled my second print. So this time what I wanted to do is show you that you can use stamps and play along on your jelly plate. So this is the gorgeous dark room door stamp that we got in the July kit. I added a layer of ink and then I added a panel of paper the same size as the stamp that I'm using. I then added the stencil and then I was ready to add that panel for the first generation or the positive pull. I then removed that little bit of panel and it's so beautiful. We can use that a little bit later on. And then I do my second pull and what you get is an empty window and that empty window is really good to stamp in and we'll do that a little later on. So that technique can be used at any time where you don't want to stamp on your jelly plate, but you can stamp on your jelly plate. So I'm just showing you here that red rubber stamp is going straight onto the jelly plate. And uh, I'm now adding a panel straight onto the jelly plate. And I'm also going to stamp the stamp onto some copier paper here and you can see what a beautiful result that is and now when we pull the print off the jelly plate you will see the exact reverse of the stamped image on the left hand side there I'm showing you that you can do this with paint but it is a little tricky so there were a few lessons that I learned the paint has to be somewhere between not too thin and not too thick when it's perfect you will get a good pull and a good stamped image. When it's too thin, like this one here, you will get a good pull, but you won't get a good stamped image. And when it's too thick, you will get a good stamp, but you won't get a good pull. So I figured out the best way is to do a somewhat thinnish brayer layer and then double stamp You'll get a good pull with a thin layer, and then you'll get a good stamp with that doubling up. That was what I concluded from my session of play. Now I did end up with some really beautiful backgrounds, and I'll just show you some here. Also remember there was the window and the panel that was cut to the same size as your stamp. What I ended up doing was pulling out my stamp platform, and I also pulled out my Versamark and my embossing powders and I stamped and added the and heat set the powder. Let me show you what happened here. So this is uh, typical of some of the problems that I have when I stamp and this is why I adore the stamp platform. As you see I've put two layers of Versamark. I'm about to add my embossing powder and you see that the middle portion here did not take. Now, in previous years, I would have thrown this away and been very frustrated and not been encouraged to do heat embossing. But what I ended up doing was gone ahead and I heat set it. I put it exactly back where it was. I had aligned it to the top of the platform and I had left the stamp exactly where it was. I went ahead and re-inked with the Versamark. I did this tight squeeze, which always works for me and then applied some powder once more and you will see that it worked this time and there is no double image and my piece of art is salvaged. Now with the panel here what I ended up doing was kind of the same thing. I aligned it and then 
I went ahead and inked with Versamark and then added my embossing powder and then I heat set that. And the advantage of a beautiful background uh, made with a jelly plate is the ombre effect that you get. You can get this with inking, this is just another way to get it. And I also love the stencil in the background. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting up all these panels. And what I decided to do was use this first background here. I could cut it down and turn it into a card, but I did decide that I wanted to make use of the, uh, the stencil pattern in the background there. So I ended up cutting it down so that it fits in my art journal. And I'm just taping it down now. I then go ahead and grab the stencil again and I line it up and I stick it down. I then reach for the Hero Arts Ink Cubes. I go for the second darkest, which is the Cornflower. And with my little dauber, I create a little window where I'm going to put a sentiment. I'm going over the division between the background paper and the art journal. Here we go, I'm just adding some sentiments now. These are the Tim Holtz clipping stickers. I love these guys. I also reach for my gorgeous stickers. Once again, I love these guys. Uh, just when you, when you just uh, don't feel like stamping and coloring, these girls are perfect. They're also a really good size. I am adding some washi for that division between the paper that I stuck down. And then I thought I wanted to add one extra element. So this is the only tree I have and I need to invest in more trees. And um, I decided to add it so that it was a third layer that was sort of coming off that page. I added it to the side and stuck it down with PVA glue. And then I'm going to add her just beneath there. And with the darkest color of that ink cube set, I'm now gonna go over, just over the edges and around the heat embossed image as well. And I really love this page. It's really simple. It's a nice winter feel page, didn't take long to do. And you get to use up the backgrounds that you made and some of the dyes that you have. And so with the rest of the images here, I just wanna show you what I did. I grabbed some cereal boxes and my Tim Holtz tag set, and I cut a whole lot of tags out of cereal boxes, and I'm gluing two together uh, and making sure that I use PVA uh, along the loop as well. This makes a really sturdy tag. I'm reaching for this beautiful Prima 6x6 pack, and this is a lovely background. Totally love how it looks. And just look at the back, like I wasn't sure the front or the back, or I just love them, but you do have to sacrifice one. So I ink the edges, and then there's just a little bit at the bottom there that's showing you can add washi, you can add ribbon, or you can add just a bit of the tearaway strip at the bottom of any of your papers. And that's what I do here. I actually put it underneath so it looks like another layer. And I'll just show you here that I actually also backed up these papers. Remember, they are copier paper. So I backed them up with cereal boxes. So this tag is quite dimensional and I love it. I'm also using the gorgeous ribbon here. I love this stuff. This one is my favorite, the striped black and red. And I'm almost out of it because I used a lot of it. And I'm just adhering this heat embossed image down. And just look at the beautiful, the black and the pink and the red and the blue. Oh, it's gorgeous. I have some poinsettia flowers that are really striking. And what I'm going to do here is something I saw on uh, one of our groups. Uh, one of the girls did this and I told her that I loved her technique and she said that she, did, she had seen it somewhere else and so she couldn't take credit for it.
So basically it's just the addition of a tiny little tag and then she puts a button and then she layers it up with some ribbon. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some metallic cord through the little tag and then I grab a button and I thread it through. And then I attach it to the larger tag. And you've just got this really gorgeous double tag feature. And it's just so layered. It's got ribbon and cord and a button. And I totally love this. I add the other poinsettia at the very top there. I didn't want to cover the number one, which I made sure not to put the ribbon on top. And of course, some more of that beautiful striped gorgeous ribbon. And then the only thing left to do here is just to add a sentiment. So I added the sentiment lost in the inky darkness which I think is perfect for the scene. And I just love how layered this tag is. Here is another one that I did. Um, this one uses the Prima trinkets. So the metal charms are gorgeous. I totally adore the use of the book pages at the bottom and I inked around the edges with vintage sepia and the sentiment here says in the shadow of the trees. This other one that I did is totally cute. Had to put a gorgeous girl on here. So she says the power of thinking fill my soul. And the last one here, I added flowers instead. And the sentiment here says, sometime in the middle of the night, there is a blob in the middle there where some of the paint is missing, but I really don't mind. It makes it unique. And I did add gold paper clips to the top of two of them, and I love that difference. Now, I just wanted to show you really quickly, I made some more tags. We actually have a challenge in July in our Facebook group, which is Tina's challenge on how to make tags. And so I will link you to her challenge in the description box below. And uh, I sat down one day and made these tags. And I wanna say thank you to Tina for challenging me because look at the beautiful tags that I made. So that's my fourth project for the July kit for Antivirus Scrap and Craft. I've had such a ball. We've had so much fun on our Facebook page. We've been making fun of winter and sharing some of the things we love about winter. I truly love our Facebook group. You girls are amazing. You make it an amazing place to be. I hope you guys have a great day today, wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you in my next video.